This is definitely a gold pot. We can do so much with rubbish. It creates a lot of recycling opportunities. From my experience and looking at the sea of fire, to me it probably looks like an electrical fault within the kitchen. Restoration work begins with removal, disposal, cleaning. The items going for laundry will be bagged up and then we will tag it. We will normally put a yellow tape and we will label the location or the site of this place. If you see this door, it's a fire rated door actually, which actually withstand the fire but it's already damaged. So we will be removing and disposing this item. Zip, we need uh, two men start here. Take out this door. This door, go toilet, ceiling come out first. Okay? Then Ratan, you stay here, settle the wiring from this side first. Can? Right here, you can see the wall. We will do the restoration work, scraping, painting, cleaning, everything. And in this small room here, certain items cannot be restored. So we are going to replace like the ceiling, the lighting, and then we'll have to check the wiring. So like this door, door frames were melted. It's already damaged, so you can even see this cabinet here is already melted. So this will go for disposal and not restoration. Lah. Nothing can be done already at this point. So this is the wet kitchen. This was the seat of fire. Some of the laminates and all is really damaged, the wood item is damaged. So we are going to dispose everything from here and then rebuild everything after that. You dismantle the fridge from the door first. All right. Then this door panel, you take out first. Okay, and then this door you through or you just key? All through. Okay. Everything, everything, everything here going for disposal. I don't have a formal background in the industry. So everything I know is learned on the ground over the last 13 years. I mean, every day is a learning experience over here. So this is a dry kitchen area. Here we're not doing any replacement work, so we're going to do all restoration works here. So as you can see, we will need to start with urgent items like the countertop, flooring, and the metal which is ready could start to pit, become rusty. So how, how we do it? I don't know. I want to see how much pitting first, ah. So before any further damage, we have to remove the suit and start cleaning and restore as much as we can first. So here we have the balcony area. Main item here is the flooring. The stone flooring will be cleaned out and then we will scrub down the whole flooring. This wooden deck will be cleaned out as well, including the glass panel and then we will get a new fresh coat of paint for the pillar, the ceiling and everything. So everything is uniform and brand new again. So all will be restored here, including painting, the lightings, and we will make it look pre-loss condition again. Two veg main course, right? Yep. Right. So, thinking of uh, alo mirchi and paneer tikka. 
COVID obviously has affected that front. Otherwise, every year we used to do it. Um, one of them, we even brought them to Batam, everyone and their family members as well. So that's something that we try to do every year, but it's been tough the last two years. So that was the reason uh, we wanted to bring everyone together as a thank you, as an appreciation for the workers who've been with us the last two years during COVID. Everyone's having dinner. You come and showcase your talent. <laughs> so do that first, then the dinner. Mom, how is this? Ah, very really nice. How long does it leave? Uh, only less than one minute. Okay, how do you use it? When we first found out that we were having a second kid, we were over the moon. Just when we had started to get control of our sleep, we chose to give it up again. Rumi is not a difficult baby, but he is a fussy sleeper, and that does take a toll on both uh, my wife and I. We wanted to name our baby something simple yet uh, meaningful. So Rumi means uh, beauty and flow. And of course, it also is the name of a famous Persian poet. So it all gelled together well for us. Uh, trip to India. What do you what do you wish? So tomorrow I leave for India. Blue Planet acquired us in 2021. They took us uh, over on a basis of our specialty, our expertise, and what we do, and being a unique company into their portfolio. So I'm meeting uh, Prashant in Chennai, which is our waste management site, to look at all the technology and everything and see what we can bring forward, what we can't. And then also we're gonna meet some people down there and see how we can expand in Chennai. Okay. The beauty about Blue Planet is whenever they acquire you or whatever they take over. Uh, you run your own operations, you run, because they're not in your business. They want you to grow the business as it is. Everything stays status quo. Not even a pencil is moved in the room. So we're going to try to aim for four major cities of India, North East, South West, and just secure ourselves there first, expand from there inwards and see how we can go about. Okay. So that will happen by tomorrow I leave, and then, uh, then we can run through the schedule and other things you have. Yeah. Anything you need. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever Big Red Employee Appreciation Dinner. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening, guys. Louder, la, guys. Yeah, better. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for your hard work you have put in and contribute to Big Red for still being number one and one-stop service provider. <laughs> Guys, I really don't know what Big Red would have done without all of you and the support of your family. We all would like to thank all the families who are here and not present as well. Mingala, Donobad, Shukriya, Tarimakase, Kamsia, and Nandri.
blue planet we are a fairly uh, young uh, around 4 plus year old company uh, what we f- uh, focus on is building uh, one of a- the asia's leading integrated waste management platform we see a lot of uh, inefficiencies in the current uh, way how uh, waste management is dealt with The trip to India was to visit one of Blue Planet's uh, acquired company, which is called Sigma. At midnight, somebody would have wanted to rest. Thinking a lot about uh, how we can um, expand our integrated waste and That's where I think disaster uh, recovery is, is one of the uh, niche areas that we wanted to focus for a long, long time. What we brought to the table is to uh, give them a much larger opportunities, right? Uh, to enable them to dream big, both uh, in Singapore as well as how to expand to other parts of the region as well. As we build integrated platform, I think integrating this offering as a part of our platform creates a very unique differentiator for us. Uh, in terms of once we go and uh, pitch uh, for our climate solutions, uh, we can integrate this as a part of our offering. We need to be ready uh, as an organization uh, to make sure we can, uh, we are uh, nimble and flexible, nimble and flexible to make sure we are able to uh, uh, derive at right solutions for the what the market needs. And disaster recovery, uh, sanita- sanitation and sanitization became a need of the hour. COVID uh, gave us an opportunity to take a step back in terms of uh, what new uh, challenges our societies, our neighborhoods are facing. We should think about expanding it with this waste management, with disaster recovery. So that's where uh, we uh, got connected with the uh, CHAM. And uh, the kind of uh, business they build and the kind of problem they were solving for uh, fit very well uh, uh, with our uh, ethos and philosophy of uh, solving a genuine problem on the ground. We want to look at their site, the technology they cover, and this is based in Chennai. I was in India actually to have a look at how do we do waste management and what are the technology we can bring forward to Singapore and apply it here. Our disinfection services actually has been around even before COVID. We do disinfection because sometimes there are bodily fluids or they are dealing with biohazard chemicals or organisms. So we have done disinfection of that sort, which is a bit more uh, commercial base of disinfection. We also do disinfection uh, for H1N1 previously and SARS even. That is how our disinfection business actually started. What we do right now is we get medical for COVID, so we do disinfect uh, homes, which is the most common places, of course, and also offices. But uh, I think COVID disinfection was the highest for hotels. We had the most number of calls for hotels, guest rooms, banquet halls, and even restaurants also for that matter. I think the public now understands the importance of cleanliness, uh, of why we disinfect things and why disinfection is needed, not only for COVID, for that matter, even for uh, other uh, diseases or sicknesses. The public or the masses are now more educated on what a virus is, exactly how it affects you, how you kill a virus or what you can do to maintain a virus-free environment. When we do disinfection, for hospitals or for labs or even for the operation theatres, these kind of areas, the disinfection is much, much of a higher standard or we call it actually sterilization. So that is where we are actually before COVID. So when COVID came along, it was not a very difficult thing for Big Red, you know, for us to switch caps into that, that zona and then provide the service to the to the public and the masses. largest landfill there.
from landfill, whatever the plastics are taken out, whatever the waste is taken out, how is it being going to a sustainability, how we are upselling it. And we wanted to see how the segregation of landfill is being done, how they recycle all the materials, and all the materials are made into chairs, coasters, kitchen cabinets. Teaching kids from young to start recycling. Yes, so absolutely. So that is something that we are making a behavioral change for a uh, sustainability aspect. And we are uh, uh, experimenting where we can uh, use the inert waste and the uh, other waste which comes out from there and make it more meaningful project. Uh, products out of it. So something like this can be used for law enforcement, for uh, 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 dividers, for uh, flood prevention. Yeah, technology is very different. And we are also a disaster recovery company with a very different technology. We are trying to use our technology together and synergize the thing. This is towards the end of the project already. We are almost done. We're going to hand over in the next couple of days. So what happens if we see over here, the back door which was burned, we have installed a brand new fire rated door. Then everything here has been cleaned out and repainted. So the decontamination work was to remove all the soot, the odour. Now we're doing the final touch up. So basically is to attack the grouting areas and all for the tiles. This is a brand new kitchen. Uh, installed by the owners. Previously, this was the seat of fire. So this wasn't here, basically. This was an old kitchen inside. And this was all demolished. The ceiling was taken down. So above ceiling has been cleaned out. The walls have been cleaned out. So we have put on a new four ceiling for them, installed the lights, and they have built a new kitchen in this area. The bedroom is the same. It's been uh, soot affected as well. So we have cleaned out the aircons. The flooring has been reset and varnished. Same for all the three rooms is now we just have to do a final touch up because when the renovation work was going on, there's still some dust around the area. So we will clean out everything so that when we do the walkover and handover, it's everything is ready for the owner. Restoration is a key yeah. because it's about speed, uh, how fast we can restore something. Because the longer we wait, right, the damage is going to get further and further and worse. To the point where repair or restoration is out of the point. And you talk about being cost effective as a business owner or anything, quick restoration is your, is your best way out. So to say how important it is, I think it's very important. The reason I'm in Chennai, this is one of our biggest sites and I wanted to see what we are dealing with, how we are dealing it because we want to bring this technology forward into Singapore, Malaysia, Southeast Asia and all that and show them that this is what we have. So Big Red was only a restoration company, a cleaning company, a disinfection company. Now we are going to waste management, more into recycling, upcycling and clean energy. Well, this is how many years of rubbish? How many years? This? Oh, this would be a couple of decades, yeah? 30, 40 years. Easy. And this used to be the same size here. We couldn't see the other side of the Yeah, that's side of the thing. It's the first time I'm able to see across the room. I don't know what's in stop. That, 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 that makes it more exciting. Excited about the concept of learning something about the waste management sector and uh, having that uh, opportunity to cross-sell that to my clients. We really have a few other branches in Singapore, like a few other offices where we have more staff, more admin staff. I don't see myself any soon just walking out or what. It's, I'm driven for it, you know, where the body can't keep up anymore. I think that's the time when probably I'll say, okay, I'm done over here. But for the next five years, I think I'm still ready to go. 
I still think there's a bit more we can do. We are close and we are getting there. We do see the road, you know, clearer the path now. Rubbish is full. And what we have learned that we can do so much with rubbish that we are just throwing it, taking it, you know, in life, we don't bother, oh, just dispose it. But actually, we recycle it, we can have a better, better space, and it creates a lot of recycling opportunities. Nora, you forgot to cheers with Daddy. Yes. Cheers. Oops. Cheers. cheers. Oh. Hello. Hey. Uh, okay. I think I should be able to be there by 10.45. Okay, okay. Thanks, bro. Bye. Baby. Yeah? I've got to go to work.